Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews. I was reaching into a box, and I pulled out three Beethoven cycles all together. Well, thank God they were together. The reason they were together is when I was doing the repertoire reviews for this particular channel about a year or two ago, I amassed a lot of my Beethoven because it was just more convenient. I pulled everything out from everywhere and stuck it in one of these, these things. See this thing here? This thing, that thing. One of these spindly little rack things. Now these spindly little rack things are very handy if you live in a one bedroom apartment with lots, you know, some nooks and crannies because you could stick them just about anywhere. And I have like a dozen of them still. And when they, when they moved, when I moved, they, they just wrapped them with like saran wrap and carried them the way they were, which was convenient because I didn't have to unpack them, all except one, which showed up as just this emptiness. And the funny thing about these is, you know, they come disassembled and you put them together yourself. And for some reason, no two of them came out the same. I mean, I think I followed the directions correctly, but they all seem to have a different number of little racks and things. But you can get about, oh, I don't know. What's, uh, what's, what's 20 times 9, 2 times 5, 18, about 150 to 160 CDs in one, which is like handy. And they pulled out all of my Beethoven's, my beautiful Beethoven's. Of course, I had like a huge stack on top of it that was very precarious. And every time I came home and brushed it with my jacket, I'd knock everything over. And in one of those boxes were, was, I don't know, something like that. A bunch of Beethoven cycles, a whole big pile of them. Now, I've done plenty of talks on Beethoven cycles, true. But these three, well, one of them is very popular, but two of them are, are less familiar. So what the heck? We get a random review. First, and I think very interesting, Carion's first Beethoven cycle with the Philharmonia, recorded from 1951 to 1955. It's in mono. Um, and it contains a bunch of overtures. Um, some of it, a little bit of it, tiny bit of it, is in stereo. Only the ninth. But, you know, you take what you can get. Now, these performances are quite interesting because they are the beginning of Carion. And after Carion did this, remember, um, Walter Legg uh, dumped him. Well, they, didn't, they never dumped Carion, but, I mean, switched doing Beethoven with this guy. Clemperer. Um, thank God. And thank God. Carion, meanwhile, went on to do like three or four more Beethoven cycles. And the interesting thing about Carion is that he never really changed. Uh, his interpretive ideas never evolved. Um, his performances were almost always virtually identical to each other. And, and I mean, the only thing where you see real differences are like in operas because of the casts. But when it came to orchestral music, it was it was the standard Toscanini new style of conducting. And it was only a little bit later when he got the Berlin Philharmonic, which was later in the same decade, that, that the Carion sound evolved, which was Toscanini with like crazy legato and super uber rich string sound. I mean, that was Carion. And so here we have it at the very, very beginning. And, and the wonderful thing about this set, first of all, the mono sound is perfectly good. But second of all, because he has the Philharmonia, it's similar to when he had Vienna, he couldn't carionitize the entire sonic framework. So the orchestra itself is an important player in these particular performances. And, and uh, you know, you get in at the beginning. So this is fun. It's nice to have. And there are some things that, because they're a little bit more rough-edged sonically, um, I think have more Beethoven-like character. I mean, Carion was not a great Beethoven conductor, in my view. I think he was just sort of quick and slick. Now, that, that's some people disagree. And you can assemble a fine Beethoven cycle from his various dozens of Beethoven cycles. But because he was the new German conductor, he had to do lots of Beethoven. So here it is. That was that. Next, let's talk about good old, good old, good old Otto. This is the Klemper edition Beethoven thing, and this contains also his mono first versions of the symphonies and, uh, symphonies and some of his, particularly five and seven, 
and I think in Eroica too, right? These are two, two Eroicas, yes. And, and also, and this is also quite interesting, his, his stereo remakes, like the seventh, which is really slow. Oh my God, it's so slow. I, you know, he, Klemperer got slower as he got older. We all know that. But his Beethoven is sui generis. It is granitic. That's the word. We always use it in association with Klemperer, like granite, hewed from stone. It isn't quick, but it is amazingly, amazingly edgy and full of tension and unsentimental and powerful. And, oh, it's just marvelous. And you get all kinds of stuff in here besides the symphonies. You get lots of overtures. Um, Leonora 1 and 2 and twice, actually. And Fidelio and Leonora 3 and the Consecration of the House twice. Fabulous. And the Creatures of Prometheus and King Stephan and the Egmont incidental music with Birgit Nielsen and excerpts from the Creatures of Prometheus and well, two Fidelio overtures. Oh my God, there's all kinds of stuff. And the Grossa Fuga, possibly the greatest ever version of that nasty, gnarly piece of orchestral mayhem. This is a wonderful box. It really is 10 CDs worth. I mean, it belongs in every serious Beethoven collection. So that's Klemp's. And last but not least, we had Antal Dorati. Now, Antal Dorati did a, a almost complete Beethoven cycle for Mercury, some in mono, some in stereo, and it was missing the ninth. So this was actually released as a special edition by the Royal Philharmonic uh, privately, or on its own label, or in some special way. And now Deutsche Grammophon got its hands on it and released it. Now, Dorati was a surprisingly fine Beethoven conductor. He really was. Uh, you know, Gunther Schuller, in his book, The Complete Conductor, where he rants and raves about how conductors, you know, ignore what the composer intended and whatnot, held up this cycle as his avatar of great Beethoven conducting because it was so top to bottom transparent. You hear all the bass lines, the tempos are basically swift and wonderful, but the balances are immaculate with the woodwinds. I think there's some more exciting Beethoven out there, and I personally prefer the Mercury Living Presence recordings. Sonically, with the London Symphony, I, I, I really do think at least the, the ones that were released in stereo, which was like five, six, and seven, I, I kind of prefer them. But it's a very, very good Beethoven cycle. Very interesting. And I, it's probably now totally unavailable, like forever. I think I got this was from the Tower Records Vintage Collection, Volume 8, released in Japan, not in the US, of course, or anywhere else. You know, why would anyone else be interested in Dorati's Beethoven? But thank God the Japanese were. And here it is. Uh, definitely worth adding to one's Beethoven collection if you can still find it. I mean, Tower Records is you know, no longer Tower Records, although it may still exist in Japan. Who knows? So there you go. Dorati's Beethoven cycle, the complete one with the Royal Phil. Three Beethoven cycles. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.